Say hi. Check one, two. Check one, two. Does that work? That's good. Okay. Takes about 20 seconds to get to my computer. Really? Okay. They stream it live, so it goes to some data center somewhere. Oh, that's kind of like it. Okay. That's better than the seven second delay. So if I had swore, you could have bleeped it out? No. No, okay. No control over it. It's just the delay. Got it. That reminds me of the, uh, the I didn't know. <laughs> of this high, I don't know, we went on a road trip. Oh, yeah. You, know, you couldn't control it. Oh, I was driving my friends. That was, uh, where was that? What was that? What was that? Not the uh, playoff games. No, Nevada. 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 The actual state. Oh, there you are. And uh -oh. she refused to, like, stop along the way because she was worried that it would upset her. So oh. we had to drive. The cat <laughs> yes. Okay. But still, I don't that. care. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm a cat lover. It's gonna be fine. So she refused to yeah, like get on the tall road. Like she wanted to drive for 30 some hours. hours. Oh, so like, like, wow. Yeah, yeah, it was like I know it was way more than 24 hours. So anyway, um, plus she had to move yeah, across, which just took a long time. Okay, so we it's stopped at a restaurant. I was pretty tired, of course. And then I, so I, I think I rushed my teeth or something. Yeah, and then I looked up and was like, don't drink the water. I mean, we're at a restaurant. Like, it has running water. Yeah, it was they, like, so no, this little box will don't drink the water. Like, water like, for like, like, <laughs> granted, I just spit it out, so I sure was not going to lie. You read it and it becomes a blast. Yeah. I'm like, well. That's a bad time. Right? And then. That's almost like an ESPN stat category where there are just so many levels where it's almost insignificant. Yeah. 
It's like, you know, it's like a little big league with the announcer going, like, well, the good thing is that Lou's batting 423 on Tuesdays in domes against left-handed pitchers after the sixth inning. <laughs> Going, everybody. Here now. Here, here. Find the back. Kind of close there, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. You hold everything up for me, right? Sure. Sure. Locked. Well, we were gonna lock the door. What we were doing? We were gonna lock the door. You guys are too nice. I just, I just started charging. I would have locked. I would have locked the door on. Man. Uh, last week you were supposed to bring the food. Can you get that memo? That's in my car. It's left over from Christmas. You want it? <laughs> yeah. It was Christmas last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of the same age, Bob and I had. I mean, not like last year. It was in 17. Yeah, 16. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a pasta in there. Want a little? Yeah, sure. I can't because I'm going to have to. Gary, you ready for a little? Is there more pasta or more mold? Which is it? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the University of Northern Iowa. This is an audio check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Audio check. Looks good. Good to go. Thank you.
like to welcome everyone to this week's Q and I press conference. Thank you for coming out. First up today, uh, women's basketball and head coach Tanya Warren. Panthers are two and two in conference play, and will play host to Evansville Friday at 7 p.m. and Indiana State on Sunday at 2 p.m. in the McLeod Center. First up today is head coach Tanya Warren. You know, I think Chris told me uh, yesterday on the bus ride home. It's been almost three years since we've been swept on the road. And to be quite honest, uh, we, don't, we didn't have enough poise and focus and toughness for 40 minutes um, that you'd need to be able to win on the road. Um, the Southern game, honestly, uh, it's a game we should have won. And somewhere along the line, uh, that might come back to bite us because I think when you're up late with 27 seconds or whatever it was, up to, and then you have a a foul uh, called before the ball even come, comes in, that's a lack of focus. Uh, and then to come down and have a chance uh, and then to turn it over with a timeout, that's a lack of focus. Um, so that, that's what ended up honestly happening in that basketball game. And then you, you turn it over 17 times and uh, you go one for 19 from the three, you're not going to beat anybody, especially on the road. Uh, and then yesterday, I, I thought we lost the game in the first five minutes. I think we gave up four offensive rebounds in the first 15 seconds, and that's that's not a joke. Um, and that allowed them to um, get in a little bit of a rhythm and, and to um, really take it at us. Uh, we was down 17 at one time and uh, found a way to, to only be down 12, and again, it goes back to our defense. Um, and then we came out and uh, played a really good second half and got the, the lead back to one, uh, and then again, I think we went four to five possessions, empty possessions, and that's where the toughness comes in. You have to be able to, to get, uh, execute, and, and at least uh, get shot attempts in those situations or get to the free throw line. Um, so we kind of hurt ourselves, um, and it's something that we have to get better at. We've done it all year long. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about our defense, and when you look at Southern, um, they're all conference Kylie Giebelhausen for us to hold her to no field goals and single digits and lose, eh, that's hard. Um, and then Liza Fruent, who is preseason um, MVP, to hold her six to eight below her average and lose by 10. Mm. So the, the, the biggest thing, probably the best way for me to sum it up, um, is our, our effort and our defense and rebounding has been good. Um, our offensive productivity has not been good, and that's the problem. Uh, so it's something that we've got to continue to work at, and hopefully uh, we'll get some shots to fall, um, and we'll get four to six people that are off in a good offensive rhythm at the same time because that's what, what we've been missing as well. I like some of the things that I saw from our bench yesterday. Um, I thought Abby came off and gave us good minutes, and Nicole and Carly and Taylor, and those kids have to be able to do that consistently. It can't be hit and miss. We need consistent um, productivity off of our bench, and hopefully, um, again, we can get ourselves uh, where we're getting four to six kids that are able to give us something offensively uh, in one, one, or one of these games. Uh, I'm hopeful in that. Uh, but it's good to be back home. Um, we get to, to come home and, and play an a Evansville team that um, – causes some problems and has caused some problems for us uh, in the past. Uh, they'll mix it up defensively. They'll pay, play man, and uh, he does a very good job of, of uh, he's going to pick and choose who he wants to shoot the basketball. Uh, they'll play some matchup. Uh, they play four guards. Um, we have some work to do between now and Friday in terms of getting ourselves prepared uh, to play. Uh, but we're glad to be back home. Are there any questions? You know, especially for this point of the year with kind of a younger team, how good is it to know that, at least on that defensive end, this team has been doing some things pretty well and pretty consistently? Well, like I told you before, Chris, coming into this season, I was a little bit more worried defensively because what we do do defensively is somewhat complicated in terms of how we defend screens and then how we mix it up. So I was a little bit more worried about them picking up that part of it. And we've actually done a really good job of, of defending and rebounding. It's just been the off and the execution offensively has been good. We just have been unable to make shots.
and that's a, that, that's a problem because it wears on your defense. So we got to find a way to produce points, and, and it can't just be from the three. We got to do a better job of consistently getting ourselves to the free throw line, and we didn't do that this weekend. I think we shot eight yesterday, and we did a good job at Southern. I think we shot 21, but we got to be able to find a different way to produce points from different people. Last two weeks, seems like Ellie's finally getting into a groove. Where would you rate where she is right now and her potential? Well, as, as I've said, what people don't understand is, is Ellie has been hurt, has been injured, and is just now starting get, to get some uh, cons consistent reps in practice. Ellie's going to be fine. I don't worry about Ellie. Um, we have to get some others that are going to be able to consistently help Ellie and take some pressure because she, she does a lot for us defensively as well. She usually um, gets the, our opponent's second best perimeter player, if not their first. Uh, so we ask a lot of her, and you look at her assist to turnover ratio is very good. She does a lot of things for her, so we need some people uh, to help her, and we have the kids to do so. We just need to find the consistency. Starting rotation-wise, I know you kind of been mixing and matching. <laughs> have you, do you feel like you're at a point where you know who your starters are? Or? I know four of the five. I, I wish I knew all five. Um, and that's probably been a struggle for me, what's really been hard, uh, because I usually have a pretty good idea of my starting rotation and my first, second, third kid off the bench. And that's been a little bit hard, but that's part of, of the process. And we're not going to lose sight of the process. We're going to stay true to it. And hopefully uh, some things begin to fall into place. The, the ride smooths out here uh, pretty shortly. Any other questions? Thank you. See the Bears hired coach. Dang. Yeah. What do you think? He was actually among all that were out there. I liked him and I liked Shermer. Will and they then, keep will they keep his defense as Yeah, thing? that was the big news out of ESPN one thousand was basically oh more than just Fangio's gonna stay, I guess. Quite a bit of Fox's old staff's gonna That's stay. Good. Which yeah, I think I'm fine with that. Matt Nagy is the O C in Kansas City. Okay. Apparently he uh, he really liked Trubisky in the draft last year, but Kansas City wasn't able to trade up that that far yeah. to get him, and they ended up with Mahomes. Okay. But he, he was advocating for Trubisky last year this time. But he really liked him. Okay. We'll see. I'm sure the franchise. All right. Uh, next up is uh, you and I men's basketball. Panthers will travel to Indiana State on Wednesday, a 6 p.m. Central start against Indiana State. And then back here Saturday, 7 p.m. on ESPN2 against Valparaiso. Next up, head coach Ben Jacobson. We had, uh, we had a better afternoon yesterday in terms of our execution and, and uh, the way we moved the basketball and how we, we, how we were able to get the ball inside to, to Bennett in particular. And Bennett uh, did a great job of moving that basketball. So we ended up with some really good offensive possessions. I was... Oh, I was 27 game minutes into the film last night, and I was watching it. And I I paused it and thought, you know, this looks like a game that we we, we should win. You know, this this feels like at the when I'm done with the rest of this next 13 minutes that we're gonna we're gonna win this basketball game because of the way the guys executed. And um, at the other end of the floor, we were able to take away uh, some of the things that Loyola uh, likes to do, some of the things that they get quite often in terms of some easy baskets and. As we got, you know, as we got all the way through the 40 minutes, there were four or five plays defensively that that hurt us, uh, and then we had three or four turnovers that ended up costing us some runouts for them that got them some easy points. But, you know, when when, when you add all of it up and you're on your home court, and that's twice now in the four conference games. You know, when the other team has got 56 or 57 points on your home floor, those are games that that you should win. Uh, but I liked how we played yesterday. Um, it is the best that we've played in the four conference games. Uh, it's the most consistent that we've been in the four conference games. The execution and the purpose that we had at the offensive end of the floor was was very good yesterday. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll build on that, uh, getting ready for Wednesday, and uh, uh, see if we can play a little bit better Wednesday night. With that, I'll take your questions. I think it was uh, a couple games ago, Coach, you mentioned something <clears throat> about, uh, I forget which way, game it was before, but tempo and trying to play with a little bit more tempo. Maybe that was matchup specific at the time, but is that something that's still kind of front of mind for you as far as offensive approach going forward? Yeah, as I mentioned, the, 
the execution and the, and the purpose, uh, we made a couple adjustments in the, in the days in between Missouri State and yesterday. The guys did a good job of getting that part done. Uh, now, Loyola is a hard team to pick up the pace against. Uh, they rebound with one or two guys when they shoot it. The other three or four guys are gone, and they're back in transition. So they're, they're going to be back there. Uh, so a, a difficult team to really get things going in transition. Uh, we rebounded the ball very well yesterday, so we may have had some opportunities to get out and push the basketball, but they, they do a good job of getting back and setting their defense. So it wasn't going to be an easy game to really uh, – uh, work to find more possessions. To um, to answer your question, generally speaking, Cole, yes, you know we need to. We found some easier baskets yesterday, but it was still a very low possession game. Um, so we've got to do both of them. So I think we've got to, we've we've got to see if we can increase the possessions by by a couple uh, for sure. Each half, uh, try to get some things in transition. You know, try to get that ball. Uh, yesterday, the ball movement was better. Uh, the guys moved around better. Um, <coughs> And as I said, Bennett handled that double team much better. We created a lot of good opportunities with our offense. But we'd still like to get things moving a little bit better, a little bit, at a little bit better pace. Yes? Did it concern you at all that if you take Ty and Bennett out of the picture yesterday, the rest of the team shoots, I think, 6 for 27 or something like that? Or is it just one of those games? Yeah, you know, it's uh, uh, one of those games in the sense that uh, it's kind of been two or three guys that have played well in a given game. And the next game, you know, maybe one of those two or three, but then a different one or two, uh, they've kind of taken turns. And uh, it's okay when you've got five or six guys that are playing well and they take turns playing a little better. But right now we seem to have two, three, maybe four guys playing well at the same time. And in the next game it's, uh, like I said, maybe two of the same four, but then a different two. Uh, and some of that, you look at Isaiah. Uh, you know, Isaiah had a really nice game at Bradley. You know, one of the guys that played well for us in that in that basketball game, he got in foul trouble at Missouri State. He got in foul trouble in the first half yesterday, and, and wasn't able to really get into um, either one of those basketball games. So uh, we need to uh, uh, we just need to keep working to get to the point where we've got five or six guys that are playing well, and three of them that play a little better in a given game, but then go on to the next game and and again get five or six guys that are playing well in the same game. Safe to say that you're <clears throat> searching for that eighth guy in the rotation. Adam McDermott got some some early burn yesterday. Yeah, with with uh, with our struggle scoring the ball, you know he uh, um, he can you know he can really shoot, and he's demonstrated that in practice. And he's got uh, he's got a little bit more size to him, and I think that's something that can help us uh, in some in some different areas. And um, but he he's proven, you know, two years ago at North Dakota, you know, as a true freshman, he made you know, somewhere close to 53 point shots. Uh, so he's been out there and done it, and uh, we're you know, looking for different ways, whether it's different combinations or different guys, to just give us a little bit of pop at that offensive end. You know, we've got a, um, and again, yesterday, there, I have no complaints with how we played offensively yesterday. Uh, created a lot of good opportunities, and uh, uh, had, we, had we been able to cash in on a few more of them, in particular in the first half, I, I think we, you know, we, we would have had a nice lead at halftime, and that game may have been, may have been very different. But yeah, there's uh, you know Adam's going to continue to get a look because he can really shoot the basketball. What's your biggest concern <clears throat> with Indiana State? Their uh, their their two guards are uh, can can get you in a lot of different ways, and they can get you fast. Uh, Barnes and, and Scott have the ability to uh, to score the ball in transition. <clears throat> uh, they use the ball screen. Uh, they can get to the rim and score it. Uh, both of them both of them make three point shots. Uh, so you've got to find a way to stay in front of those two guys. And you've got to find a way to try to uh, keep those guys in check. It's hard to do over the course of the 40 minutes. You know, they, they've been able to get against just about everybody. They've been able to get loose at some point. And uh, so that's going to be part of the game. And how we handle uh, those two guys when they do get loose and get going a little bit is going to be important. But they've also done a really good job of getting the ball inside. Uh, and their rotation at the center position has served them well. Uh, uh, so you've got to defend the low block. You've got to defend those two guys. And, uh, the part of their team that's gotten better since they started conference play, uh, maybe even just before that, is you know, the guys in between uh, Barnes and Scott in that center position. Those guys are younger or newer to their team for the most part, and they, they've gotten a lot more comfortable here in the last four or five games and have uh, seemed to settle in and, and gain an understanding of what they've got to do to help their team. And They just seem much more on the same page. But they're... A lot of things get done with, with the two guards and then on the low block with the rotation at that center position.
<clears throat> Can you put a finger on what it's been these last four games, or has it just been something different every single game out? Two things. We, we, we've had a hard time getting points. And when you're uh, – so against uh, Southern Illinois, you know, they've got 22 at halftime, but we've only got 25 on our home floor. And – you know, you'd like to be able to on your home floor. You'd like to be able to get to you know somewhere in the mid 30s. And if they've got 22, uh, then you're in a decent you know, spot with 20 minutes to go on your home court. Uh, against Bradley, we're up five with 15 minutes left. And uh, but we, we I think we've got 30, 39 maybe, and we're stuck there. You know, we're still around 40 with eight minutes to go in the game. You know, at, at some point, without some more points on the board, the other team is going to play well at some point. And uh, so it, it isn't that we haven't made some mistakes defensively and we didn't rebound the basketball against Missouri State, but we're sitting with so few points for so long that you, any mistake you make is so magnified. It's just really hard. We're putting a lot of pressure on ourselves defensively and in rebounding to do everything perfect, and that's that's never going to be the case. So uh, that that's uh, that would be the first part of it. And then the, the, the second is... Uh, just getting more guys, as we talked about earlier, getting more guys playing well all on the same night. You know, getting some consistency with five, six, seven guys, and part of that's figuring out the rotation. You know, part of that's guys stepping up, and you know, we've got enough guys that have played enough games. You know, being able to play good night after night. Uh, so th those two things really stand out to me at this point. Is that, is that the biggest difference? That's the longest you waited to ask a question in my, seven, in my 17 years. I, I was enjoying everybody else asking good questions. Is that you think the biggest difference for this team uh, from when you were picking up some of those big wins in the non-conference to now is that there just aren't enough guys contributing uh, on a given game, or is there something else that, that isn't? Yeah, there? you know, I, yeah, I really think both of those. That uh, you know, when er, you know through the first uh, 10, 11, 12 games, uh, you know, we saw six or seven guys that that were. Pretty well involved in, in what was going on, and that helps. Because uh, then you've got you know three or four of them are playing good, you're okay. Uh, but but if if there's only three or four guys that are really involved, and only two of them that are playing at a pretty high level, that's not enough. Uh, and we didn't have that early on. You know we had more guys, um, and then the consistency is such such a big deal. You know you uh, and you need more of that from your older guys. You know and you've heard me talk about Bennett, and you've heard me talk about Clint, and at times those guys have been terrific. And they've been there more so this year than uh, in terms of being consistent than they have in the past. Yeah, but you know, as a fifth-year senior, you've got to be there every night. And uh, when Bennett and Clint have played at a high level, we've usually played pretty well. So we need some more guys, as I said. Uh, obvious, but if we've got five, six, or seven guys that, that are playing pretty well, and, we, and we've, got, we've got good enough players to be able to do that. And when they start, and they will again, and they might as soon as Wednesday. I mean, we're uh, very capable of doing the two things I'm talking about. Uh, but getting five, six, or seven guys playing good on the same night, turning around the next night and having the same thing happen uh, is important. And it, it has to start with your older guys. Uh, that's a lot of responsibility. Uh, there's no question. Uh, but that has to be part of it. If your team is going to be consistent and if you're going to have a successful season, uh, if your team is going to get better, uh, you know, with the with the practice opportunities, and when you go game to game, you've got to have that from your older players. And we've had it a lot from from our older guys, but we haven't had it every single day, and uh, every single night on game night. You and then we just haven't had enough guys in the mix. You feel like you're close to turning the corner and getting that consistency? Yeah, I don't, like I said, we've got good players, and uh, uh, and we've got a, a group of guys that have already shown they're very capable of either uh, playing well enough to to beat good teams. Or playing well enough to go toe to toe with the likes of Villanova or Xavier, uh, and we haven't played, we haven't played great in particular at the offensive end of the floor in the four conference games. In uh, Southern, we're tied uh, with two or three to go in the basketball game. You know, last night is a tie game. Uh, Missouri State uh, was, is within reach when we start the second half, and really, I think even ten minutes into the second half, before they went on their uh, two or three possession run, that moved it up above ten. Uh, and at Bradley, we're up five with 15 minutes to go. So, yeah, yeah it's not um, – it's one of those things. And, and, and uh, uh, in this type of situation, you're usually not as far away or as far off from getting
getting on the other side of it uh, than what a lot of people might think. And, and I think that applies to our guys right now because we've got good players. And we've got seven or eight guys that can play good on the same night. And Clint and Bennett are very capable of playing good every time they play. Uh, so we've just got to get those two things accomplished. Building off that, compared to other seasons, because obviously, infamously, two years ago, you guys were 10 and 11 around this point in the season. I know Clint has brought it up before. Are you worried about this team's potential in the long run, or can you compare it to some of those other years, or how would you rate this year where you guys are right now compared to those other years? Yeah, I don't uh, – those experiences, I think, help me as a head coach, and I think they help our staff because we've been through them before. And it gives us the opportunity – or the ability, more so than the opportunity, to help our players get through something like this. Um, so it, it's not something that will, will uh, that I will talk with our guys about. Hey, last year or two years ago. Uh, now, some of the things that we were able to do to come out of that and play better, some of those things. Uh, Clint was here. Uh, Bennett was here. Uh, obviously, our coaching staff was together. So those are things that uh, that, that we're able to to help them with. Uh, but. It's not something where I compare, you know, year to year or team to team. Uh, we've just got to do, you know, like always, we've got to do everything we can to help the guys play better and to see if we can't get them in better positions where they're a little more confident, especially right now. Um, I talked about it a little bit last night on the radio show that, um, that you know, there, there's frustration for everyone that has a vested interest in our program right now. Uh, but you know, no one more frustrated than the players. You know, they're in this morning at 6.30 lifting weights, and I, I hear the ball bouncing outside right now. Somebody's out there shooting 500 shots. You know, the amount of time that they put in to, to making this thing go well, uh, there's frustration when, when you don't, uh, you're not able to play well enough to, to, to get a win. So, uh, you know, our job is to get them in spots where they're comfortable and get them in spots where they can pick up a little confidence and, because we're good enough to, to play better. You had said before the season, Coach, that um, you had high expectations for Juwan this season. Uh, expected him to be maybe about a 10, 12 point a game guy. Um, I suppose we could call this the halfway point of the season. Just how would you yeah. assess Juwan's play? Yeah, uh, he's he's a long ways ahead of where he was a year ago. Uh, it showed some flashes in the maybe in the first 10 games, let's say uh, that that part of the season um, where he was about to maybe break out and take the, even the next step. Uh, and and now he's kind of. Uh, and it kind of flattened out a little bit in terms of that progression. Still a long ways ahead of where he was a year ago. Uh, but I know for him, for our team, you know, for, for me as his head coach, I just felt like he was really close to busting through and taking the, uh, the next step after playing well through nine or ten games. And uh, He's still got it in him. You know, he, uh, uh, and I still think he can be that kind of guy for us. Uh, so now it's a matter of him making sure he's in working. You know, he's got to get in and... and uh, and really work and spend the, the amount of time that is required. Uh, as you know, as I've said before about about some of our other guys, it's not. It isn't. It isn't the amount of time that they think is required. It's the amount of time that is required. And uh, he's putting in more time than he ever has. But to break through and to and to be that next level type of guy, man, that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of effort. That takes a lot of commitment. And, uh, so we're going to keep working hard on that process to, to see if we can't get him to bust through to that, that level you're talking about. Are you worried about this team? Uh, yes and no. And, and yes only because I, you know, I worry about our guys all the time. You know, I, when we're two years ago in a ranked night in the country, I worry about our guys. And right now in our own form of the league, I worry about our guys. So yes only from that standpoint. Uh, no in terms of, you know, I, I, I base so much of it on how we practice you know, our interaction at practice and how hard they practice, what kind of questions they're asking, how they are in the film room, and they're doing great there. You know, so we've, we've just got to continue to practice hard and practice well. Starting isn't everything, <clears throat> but ha- maybe you could share with us kind of your thought process with the six-game losing streak. Do you give much thought to trying to shake it up a little bit right out of the gate in, in, in with the starting lineup? No. No. I don't. Um, and most of what you said first, Gary. Uh, is, uh, and you've heard me say it, you know, since I've been our head coach. I think I don't. I don't. Uh, um, I just don't think much at starting or non start not starting. You know, I know it's it is important to the players. Um, I know it is important to their parents. I know it is important to the fans. I, I mean, I get all that. Um, 
but I've been around this game for a long time. Uh, and if if uh, if you're not fully bought into who we are and what we're doing because you're not starting for us, then you're in the wrong place. You know, period. So uh, whether that starting lineup changes for Wednesday's game or it stays the same or you know, and then changes Saturday or it doesn't change the rest of the year, I mean, it's going to be what it's going to be. It'll be based on us trying to put the the best team out there to get us started and the best team to give us the best chance on that night. So, um, But generally speaking, I just don't I don't see that as such a big deal you know, as to why, we, why we're sitting where we're sitting here after four games. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Next up, Panther Wrestling and head coach Doug Schwab. Uh, Panthers took uh, second place at the Southern Scuffle in Chattanooga, Tennessee over New Year's. They're going to travel to the Virginia Duels in Hampton, Virginia this Friday and Saturday. Next up, head coach Doug Schwab. Dressed up for you today. Uh, yeah, I was just I was just listening to Jake talk, and there's a few things that kind of hit me a little bit, and talking about guys starting and not starting, and you know, and we got that a little bit right now because some guys aren't sure if they're going to be the guy in the lineup, and and the job doesn't change though, you know, and I think what what he was saying is that he believes in his guys, and it doesn't sometimes, yeah, I mean, some guy can spark it, but man, you believe in your athletes even when they're struggling, and. Uh, Man, that makes to me that makes a great coach, you know. And those guys will get out of it. Man, sometimes you're in a funk, but man, you work yourself out of it. And in uh, you know a couple weeks from now, you'll be laughing about that. But you know, as far as where our team's at, um, I don't think we've wrestled anywhere near what we're really capable of doing. And we've placed fourth and second in two of the best tournaments in the country. Um, so I think it tells you a little bit about we got a pretty dang good team. Um, but with that and our guys know it i mean i don't think we've clicked on all cylinders yet um, i think some guys are competing very well i think there's certainly being progress made um, but you know 10 weeks from now man uh, i'm excited to see where we're at you know this week i'm excited to see where we're at and to see how much we can grow from from now and then and i, I don't think i've talked since since we had the scuffle have i i don't even remember i'm, I'm so lost on on days um but you know we got second down there we had four guys in the finals you know, had an opportunity to wrestle three national champions, which is a, is a great thing. But I think for what our guys were able to learn from that is that I don't need to build this guy up so much. <laughs> you know, sometimes if you go out there and, and you don't believe you can win the match, it makes it really, really tough. So as you get into a match and then you're in the third period or, you, you know, you go through a flurry and you're like, holy cow, man, I, I can wrestle with this guy. I know I can, I can compete with this guy. I can beat this guy. And sometimes you have to go through that to really figure out that you're, that you're there. And our guys were able to do that. That's why we went to that tournament. We wanted to, we wanted to see a team like Penn State. Um, that's an opportunity, our really only our opportunity to be able to see those guys before the national tournament. Um, so our guys put ourselves in those, in those situations. We had four guys in the finals, you know, four seconds. Um, Lujan came back and got third. It was the first time he's ever got third in the tournament, um, usually because he's winning the tournament. Um, but to me, that's a, that's a, that's a huge step. Um, Last year at that tournament, he wasn't able to do it. Last year, he wasn't able to rebound when coming off a loss. Even Vegas, even Vegas, he struggled a little bit. So, I mean, that's the kind of growth that we want to see. Even though guys aren't clicking on all cylinders yet, there's improvement being made, um, and, and guys are certainly getting better. Um, you know, I think, you know, everyone's kind of patting us on the back. You know, you got second in the scuffle, great job. I really think we did what we were supposed to do. You know, if you look at where our seeds were at and where we were supposed to be, but we did beat a good team in Lehigh. Lehigh's got a really, really good team. Um, so I'm not going to just kind of gloss over it and, eh, you know, no big deal because our team did did do a good job. You know, we're scoring bonus points a lot, and we had a lot of guys make deep runs in the tournament. Um, but with that, I know we're nowhere near where we can be, you know, when we get to the Big 12 and we get to the national tournament. Um, this weekend will be a good event. I know Virginia Tech, Arizona State, um, Virginia, Old Dominion, uh, there will be 13 teams there. I um, can't tell you who exactly we're going to match up with. I think how they do it is they pool. So the first day we'll wrestle two matches, and then how, how the pool play goes. If you're 2-0, and then you'll go to, I think, the championship bracket. And then you'll go to the next tier down, the next tier down. So 
Um, you know, we could see a team like Arizona State, Virginia Tech. You know, we're going to see a lot of good individuals um, throughout those other teams, but um, just another opportunity for us to get some get some uh, some big time matches in. You know, um, time for us to beat some guys that are ranked really that are ranked higher than higher than us and and build some points for the national tournament. You know, we got four four duels this weekend, and then I think we have four duels the rest of the year. You know, so really our season. I don't want to say winding down, but I mean, we are we're getting down to where we got six competition days left before the conference tournament. So, um, you know, we're kind of zeroing in as far as lineup. There's still some things I think up in the air. You know, some guys have I think thrust themselves forward a little bit and with with a scuffle, but you know, I'd like to see it be a lot clearer. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see where this guy's this guy's place and this guy's winning the dang tournament. Then then, then there's then there's zero question. But kind of like uh, Jake was saying, those guys have to stand ready. Um, we haven't had made any decisions yet. I, I imagine we're going to split some matches this weekend, but it's time for a guy to kind of step forward and be the guy, and and really thrust himself and 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 make it just clear as day that hey, you're the guy, you're the guy. So you know, I'm talking about 33, 57, 65. You know, we really need to get some things figured out and ironed out there. I think the other weights were 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 set pretty well, but you know, when you have three weights that to me. Someone needs to step up, then this is this weekend's a great opportunity to do that. So, um, I don't know. I guess any questions? With how he performed at 65 at Southern Scuffle, is any time where you're going to rever- uh, Bryce might reverse his decide- decision to redshirt this year? Nope. He goes out and, I mean, he's making improvements. I mean, there's some things that Marsh Teller's, Marsh Teller's really, you know, Marsh Teller's really good, Stire's really good, but, you know, there were some things in that match that, Okay, he, he's making some gains. Um, you know, after after the Joseph match, I think he real, he realized some things, and now he's realized them. Now, now to me, it's about continuing to press, progress, and move forward. Um, man, it doesn't change the things that I want to see and how we want him to grow throughout this redshirt year. Um, you know, it'd be easy now. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll put him in there. He's the best guy. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. I mean, we got to have someone else pick up, and and whoever whoever that guy is, they're going to be more prepared in the future because they get to go through this. But no, I mean, he's we'll keep that red shirt on. None of those guys who finaled are seniors. Yep. I know, obviously, like you said, it's what you you know you expect to come in second yeah. place, Penn State. But when you look at this in the long run, what does it say that all the most of those guys are still underclassmen? Oh, I was just talking to somebody about this because. We don't ever get ahead of ourselves, you know. In in, I know some people. Yeah, we got everybody back, man. I don't know if we have everybody back. I have no idea what's going to happen this next year. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen today. Um, so we got to take take advantage of of what we have. Certainly, looking in the future, and you look at what well, you have all these guys back. That's just assuming that guys are going to get better. I mean, if if they, if they don't progress, then we're not going to be any better because other people are going to continue to move forward. So. Um, trying to because it gets me it gets me fired up because those questions get me they get me and I don't want to say I don't want to say upset but like I don't want our guys I don't want anybody thinking about anything that's in the future I want them thinking about right now and taking advantage of this because I mean we may never get another opportunity so I don't care if our guys are freshmen or sophomore or juniors and we have everybody back it's about taking advantage of right now um and our guys I think they understand that too because <laughs> they've had some teammates and you got a guy like Cooper Moore last year He's thinking, well, I got my senior year coming in, and then he gets hurt at the start of the year, and the season's done. Um, so, I don't know. I guess I try to keep him fixed on what's just right, right in front of us, and right now. And why do we have to wait till next year to really make our mark? Like, well, these guys. I, and I'm kind of going on and on because because you got me fired up because I was just talking about this to someone yesterday about how you know some some people are talking. Well, you got everybody back, and these guys are all young, and like I don't I don't care. I don't care if we don't continue to progress and move forward. Just because you get older doesn't mean you get better. Um, we got to take advantage of right now, and I know our guys are, and we're going to continue to build momentum throughout the season. Like I said, I I think we I think we were better from here, from Vegas to here. We were better shape wise, um, so we're still putting edges on. Drew Foster I thought looked really really good. It's the best that he's it's the best that he's looked, and other guys are are continuing to improve, and. That's more what I guess what I'm concerned with. I'm not concerned with what we have coming back for next year because I'm concerned about the Virginia duels this weekend. So kind of a long-winded answer, but 
and I'm trying, trying not to get upset. I'm sorry if I made you upset. <laughs> no, you didn't make me upset. Building Look, I'm still, I'm still smiling. Building off that in the here and now, we'll, we'll yeah. phrase it this way. Okay. Maybe this won't, won't be as controversial. Um, for this young group to <laughs> yep. come in second to Penn State yep. to beat Lehigh, what does that do for this group right now? It tells them they're a good team. Instead of us telling them, instead of us like, hey, you know, you're capable of doing this, and, and you know, you, you are one of the best guys. They actually, they actually proved it to themselves. And that's, that's really, unfortunately, you know, you wish that they didn't have to have that. A lot of times you have to have a validating victory. You have to have sign of something that, okay, I am there right now. Because, you know, they're watching some guys that maybe they, two years ago, they're, they're a senior in high school, and they're watching this guy in the national finals, you know. So they're, they're building them up. And really, it's just it's another guy that weighs the same weight and all those things. But um, they just got to figure that out for themselves. So I think it just gives us confidence that what we talk about and how we believe that we're a really, really good team and that we're prepared as anybody, that it's actually happening, it's showing through results and not just talk. Um, so I think it just builds confidence for our guys. And like, dang, we, we, dang, we are really good. What we're doing, what the things we are doing is, is working. Like, we are right there instead of, hey, we're almost there. N next year you'll be there. So that's kind of why I... I Try to stay away from any next year talk. It's about it's about right now because I'm not going to sell these guys short in any way. You've been out east three times. You've been out west. Yeah. Is there any worry that the fact of all this travel could wear on you, or is it, was it just maybe a necessary uh, evil or, or process to get to where you want to be at the end of the year? I don't even think about that stuff. I don't think they think about it either. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're not traveling overseas. You know. I mean, it's not like we're going to a 12-hour time difference. I mean, it's. I mean, it's part, it's part of it, and with changing the conference, we knew we were going to have to travel a little bit more, and it's fine. I mean, you think about the national tournament, you, you, you're there on a Tuesday, and that's kind of what we did. We, we, went, we went the day before to, to the scuffle. We tried to, try to mimic as much as we can that event and getting ready for it and, and the nerves of it and the, the time, the downtime and, and all that stuff. You know, I think that's the best thing that we can do, but I don't. I don't think about that stuff as a version. I think it's it's awesome, man. We those guys enjoy traveling, man. You build you build camaraderie then. You know, I mean they're they're playing silly games in 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 the airport together and building just building a relationship. And I don't know, I think traveling builds a builds some strong bonds, so it's been good for us. It's been good for us. I don't I it's not even a thought in my mind, so your thoughts on what uh, Keaton Gertz did at the Flanagan Open, the freshman? Ha huh, good he the thing that I was was most happy with is that he was able to come back in a match. He was down late in the match and he was able to come back. He hasn't he hasn't done that a whole lot this year. Like if things kind of like if he's rolling, then he just rolls a guy. But if a guy kind of gets and starts getting to him, then usually it goes it kind of goes south pretty pretty hard. So I was I was really happy that he was able to to strap it back up and and be able to really gut one out. You know he got a, got a point late and then got got a score in overtime um, against a guy that's. You know, D2 All-American, he's really good on top. Um, you know, he was able to do some really good things. But just, you got to talk yourself into things. Sometimes sometimes some of our guys, and him especially, he'll talk himself out of things. <laughs> you know, ah, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not there. But, man, he, he talked himself into it and was able to, to get a big win. And, you, you know, you build, you build a lot of confidence from, confidence from that. Um, I've seen growth. I've seen growth from him and just the freshmen in general, you know, in the room. And they got to put themselves in some really uncomfortable situations. It's... Man, it's it's tough jumping from high school from being the man in in the room and controlling everything to getting your tail kicked usually daily, um, and that's that's part of that growth process. It's part of what can they handle? Can they handle that? And you know what? Obviously, he's he's making some jumps because I haven't seen, seen him be able to do that a whole lot this year. So real good for him. You know, he had a couple of other, other guys get second. Really important for these guys to go out there and compete and 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 grow and get better. Um, I don't know how much we'll compete these guys the rest of the season. You know, we're kind of looking at the future, getting them on lifting plans, getting them to help our guys get better and really go through these next, you know, 10 weeks to help make the team as, as good as possible, help make the teammate get as high as a stand on possible. And, and for them guys to go through this, this with them, you know, so next year they're like, man, I'm, I plan on being the guy. I'm going to go through as much as I can with this guy and not kind of get to next year and be like, yeah, I don't know what to expect here. So that's what we're trying to get these guys to do right now. But Who or what are you most excited for when it comes to this weekend's Virginia track? Oh, boy. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of potential matchups, but I, I try not to get ahead of myself. Like, well, we could wrestle this guy, and we could wrestle that guy, and we could wrestle this guy. I guess for me, it's, 
I think we've competed very, very well in, in, in tournaments. You know, duels, duels we've been a little bit hit and miss for some reason. Um, so I kind of want to see how our level is, even though it's, it's a duel, but it's a dual tournament. I just want to see if, if we're able to stay consistent for four matches, we're able to get ourselves up. I think we've done a good job in tournaments. Just for duels, for some reason or another, it, hasn't, it just hasn't seemed like it's been the same. So I kind of want to see that, that transfer over, just being consistent at a high level. And hey, we're one of the best teams. Like you guys just saw, you saw what we've done the last, these last couple of tournaments. Let's go out, let's go out and compete that way and, and step on the mat that way. Talk about raising levels. You know, Jay Swarm last year he had some good matches, yeah. good performances. But this year it seems like match after match after match he's had a good match. Whether it's a, most of them have been wins, there's been a few losses, but even in the losses he's been pretty good. Talk about the way he's raised his level this year to take over that 125. Uh, consi you know, consistency. You know, we talk about, I mean, approach too. It's funny he was talking about the the U and I Open last year and lost some matches and just didn't compete very well and then he was kind of like kind of refocused some things and like sometimes we build things up so much <laughs> you know we make it like like life and death and winning a match and man you hold on so tight that when you hold so tight then you don't do anything and i think you see him out there he's not holding tight i mean he's being able to go compete he's going to compete at a high level and whoever it is he's going out and if it's a defending national champion i'm going to go out and i believe i can i can beat that guy you know, and he's just been consistent. He had a really good spring and summer. We needed him to get stronger. He got stronger. I mean, you can see him out there, but I think just mentally where he's able to keep his his focus, his perspective, has been has been the best thing because he just he's not he's not he's not holding it on, not holding so tight. And we got some guys that are holding really tight right now, and and they're wrestling really tight. <laughs> so yeah, trying to figure that out for each guy is a little bit of a battle. But I think that's been the the biggest thing for him is you know last year it's like. I, and I tried to be aware of it, like, hey, you're filling in for this guy. He wasn't a filling man. He was he was the guy when he was the when he was the, the guy. He was a guy, you know. It wasn't like he was filling in for Dylan. I think that's kind of was almost like kind of keeping the seat warm. Where now I'm the man, and so we, I got to watch it that as far as being aware of that too in the future of a coach. Like, and you're the guy. I don't care if if this guy's maybe waiting in the wings and he's been a couple time All American. Like, it, you're the guy right now, and you got to got to treat the guy like that and, and talk to him like that. So. Um, no, I love how he's competing, man. He comes out ready to wrestle every single time. And like I said, we need we need some more guys that just I want to win and I'm prepared to win, but if I don't, man, my world isn't going to crumble. <laughs> and then you can then you can compete pretty wide open like he's doing. Confidence-wise too, at the top position, you see a lot of guys they'll choose bottom or neutral, and this yeah. guy, how many have you counted how many times he's taken top? Uh, I'd have to I could probably think about it if I went through all his matches. But he's done, you know, he's done it quite a few times. But he feels those guys too. Like, and I don't know if you've ever watched the guy's body language a few times. Like a few of those guys, they he picks top, and you can just see him like. I mean, I can I can't say repeat what they're probably saying in their head, but I mean they're like, man, I cannot believe this guy is going back on top of me. But he's got that much confidence. And I tell you what, if you, I don't care what position, if you have that much confidence, I mean, it just. That's a hard thing to stop. It's a hard thing. That is a hard thing to stop, and he's gotten better on his feet too. I mean, he's he's doing a good job. I mean, Cruz Cruz wrestled a really really smart match. Very good wrestler. Um, quick to his finishes. I mean, just he didn't give him any chance to scramble anywhere, and got out from bottom early. And you know that's why the match was that's why the match was a score it was. Um, but certainly good for Jay to be able to wrestle that guy because he learns a lot from those from those experiences. Like I said, it's not like he's he's end of the world type thing like I, I learn from and I get better okay maybe maybe I held tight here or I did this and he'll adjust to it so that's a great thing but man he's a confident he's a confident confident SOB man and I love how how he competes <laughs> scouting report Steelers Jaguars oh boy Steelers offense is is in good shape right now I mean Rothenberg is not going to throw five iron interceptions I mean he's not he's not going to do that again uh, got to stop Fournette. Obviously, they tried to do it last time, but he was he was able to break free. He had a real big run late in the game. I don't know. I like where the Steelers are at. I mean, you got to beat the best teams anyway. I think I think their offense is clicking too well. That and the Jaguars can't score that many points. I mean, they, they just can't. I don't know. I'd say 20, 24, 24, 10 Steelers. I think they win handily. That's 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 my that's my scouting report. I like I like where the Steelers are at. Um, I'm not sure. 
Not sure what it's going to be televised on. I imagine it's on. Is it on track? Do you know? I'm sure it's on one of those, one of the Virginia duels. So That's if you want to. Steelers. No. No, the Steelers. I'm. I'll be back on Sunday. I'm. I'm excited to watch my 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 youngest boy Hendricks is a huge Steelers fan. I mean, huge. He was watching the games yesterday, scouting, getting ready. So he. He sends Tomlin a little bit of breakdown of what, what they, what the Jaguars did. So they'll be in good shape. Uh, other than that, it's good to be back in school. I can tell you that. I get back in a routine. Our guys got got their classes going again, and kind of be able to get things back going. We got some good training over over Christmas, but now now we're back and be able to kind of really um, get some training in, get some travel. We wrestle Virginia duels, and then we go to SDSU the next week, and then we have a weekend off and be able to get some training in. So. Um, looking forward to really like where our schedule's at. Looking forward to this weekend and and uh, pay attention. I guess the Panthers will be wrestling on Friday, Saturday. So, go Panthers! A lot of talk. A lot of talk today. Thank you, Doug. Uh, just a reminder for our schedule next week: we'll be off on Monday for MLK Junior Day, and then we'll be here on Tuesday, uh, back here Tuesday at noon for the UNI press conference next week. So, have a great week. Go Panthers! <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, Elwin. Just say the alphabet. Wouldn't that work? Just say the alphabet. Yeah. Can I buy a vowel? I have no clue. Yeah.